Our next guest says the Fed should pause or should cut rates next week. Yes. Uh, Ian Shepherdson joins us now. He's chief economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics. And we were just talking uh, off camera, trying to understand the, the uh, I think Ken Griffin and Jamie Dimon have similar uh, reasons for thinking that you should wait. And I think that is that inflation can be resurgent. And if you start and then have to, to, to again, raise later, that increases a hard landing and the possibility of a hard landing. Because if Jamie Dimon is worried about a hard landing, he should want to cut rates now. But he's not. Yeah, I think he's worried not. about it getting out of control where you have to yeah. go much higher than you thought and then you have to. You think a soft landing is happening, but you think they should cut rates right away. Why? Yeah, because I think that inflation is actually going to perform much better than most people and the Fed think over the course of the rest of this year. You know, this idea that, that it could rebound is kind of rooted in what happened in the 70s, where it did rebound. But there was an awful lot of things that are very different then compared to now. And all of the things that I wanted to see to, to kind of renormalize after the pandemic so I could be confident that inflation would come down and stay down, they've all happened. You know, the, the labor market has normalized rapidly. Supply chain chaos is a thing of the past. No threat from global food and energy prices like we had a couple of years ago. Uh, and, and the housing market's normalizing as well. And these things haven't fully worked through into the inflation numbers yet, but I think they will. So, you know, fearing that there's something bad just around the corner, well, you need to tell me what that thing is, and I'm just not seeing yeah, it. Even the tight labor market is, isn't what, what... That used to be what everyone said. Yeah, it's, the it's not as tight, no. I would tell you that it looks like the markets are anticipating cuts near term. Global stock markets all hitting highs. U.S. stock market hitting highs. Gold hitting highs. Bitcoin hitting highs. These are all Fed cuttings, op reopening the spigot, turning the, the liquidity back on. These are all signs of that. So the market is going to be disappointed if, if we really don't. If do it. the market will be disappointed, they don't go for sure. I think the market's saying yeah. they're, they're expecting the Fed. To, and to I, you know, I think they're right. I, the, the, the case for doing nothing this year, which I keep hearing whispers that they're going to do nothing this year, just going to sit there for the whole year. I'm really struggling with that. But it does depend on the, uh, the inflation picture continuing. And you to think it's going to be a, a cooler number today, too, uh, cooler than consensus. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, the PPI has been performing great. It's very noisy, but the trend has been really strongly downwards. You know, the CPI yesterday was a bit disappointing, but it certainly wasn't terrible. And all of the leading indicators are telling you that things should improve substantially further over the course of the, the next six months or so. And at the same time, I've got to say I'm getting a bit nervous about the spring and summer labor market, which would be a real game changer for the Fed and for the markets, because, you know, we're seeing hiring indicators softening and we're seeing firing indicators rising. And that's a combination we haven't had in this cycle, and I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with it. Is everyone seeing that? Because not everyone talks about that. Well, the, the, the cracks in the labor market yeah. are... We did see the, the employment unemployment rate tick, uh, the, yeah, unemployment rate tick up a little it bit, did. but that had to do with participation. Yeah, that, that, that was noise. What I'm worried about is small businesses, you know, the NFIB survey that doesn't get as much attention as it should, it has a pretty reliable hiring indicator. It's dropped sh hard in the last three months. And at the same time, you know, the challenger layoff notifications have gone up. Google searches for claiming benefits have hey, gone Ian, up. Let me so, just stop you yeah. there. If, if we should be paying more attention to the NFIB, mm. yesterday they said their top concern was inflation. All of these small businesses. Well, that's, that's what they said, but that's not what comes out of their numbers. What comes out of their numbers is businesses worrying about credit conditions, cutting their capital spending plans, and cutting their hiring plans. And the commentary in that survey sometimes is quite different to what the numbers actually show. But they show. also said that they had to pay a lot more to hire new workers and that that's yeah. where they expect the inflationary pressures to continue. Yeah. I just don't see that in their numbers. I read in the commentary and I look at the numbers and I see, you know, jobs hard to fill is falling, hiring intentions are falling, credit conditions are tight, capex is falling. Actually, their selling price number is falling as well. So you know, I'm struggling to reconcile what they said with what the numbers actually show. But the numbers, the hiring index, which is the one that keeps me awake at night, that's dropped hard in the last three months. Now, that could be noise, but three months to me is looking more like a trend. Four or five months for sure is a trend. So I'm getting twitchy about this because it's happening at the same time that these layoff announcement numbers are CPI creeping higher. CPI has core up two months in a row hotter than anticipated. Yeah, yeah, it did. So uh, three months would be a trend there. Three, three months would be interesting. I'd be surprised if we get three months. We've had two months of weird rent numbers and a pop in airline fares uh, in the You don't actually report. twitch. You, you feel twitchy. You don't actually start I, twitching. I always feel twitchy, John. You feel twitchy. I always feel twitchy because could things we, don't move could in a straight we line. See, could <laughs> we see it if it if it happened here? Yo, because I'm going to keep get you to keep talking about this. So are we restrictive? So we're restrictive right now. Yeah. What do you think the the actual 
The, the gauge that, that the Fed uses, its favorite, what, what is that core PC? What do you think it is a month from now, two, three months from now? You think it's around where? Well, in the second half of last year, it was 2% in Q3 and 2% in Q4. I'd quarterly so how, then, how many cuts yeah, do we need right away? They should, they should go a half point next week then. Oh, I would be delighted if they went a half point next week. No they kidding. I mean, just to be clear, there's zero possibility of this. I know. But, I know that. But, but you, I I well, you're yeah. Ian Shepardson. Well, I don't have my hand on the lever of, of race. I but know if you I did, don't, but if you I did, I'd, I voted would everywhere. So you think they should go a half point immediately. Uh, and how, how many total this year? Well, uh, this year I'd like to see them cut by 150 uh, in, in total. Um, but the sooner they start, the better. Is you know, uh, I, I understand they that they, they you know, they Do you think they ever would go 50 if they need it? Would they ever say, holy cow, we need to go 50? Oh, well, you know, not, not now, no, but no, I mean, six you know, months if, from now if, they if, might. If we see two or three payroll numbers of minus 100, yeah, they'll do 50s. Uh, and I'm not ruling that out. I've, you know, I've learned over the last four years since, oh, it's a four-year anniversary of COVID, isn't it? You know, I've learned not to say anything's impossible or to say that anything is certain. I mean, we've all learned that. Yeah. Uh, and just because the last few months payroll numbers have been pretty good, and the last couple of months CPI numbers haven't been so good doesn't mean that the next six months will be the same. You know, at turning points, you get surprised. You get surprised in both directions, but you don't get necessarily surprised consistently. Uh, and this is a problem for the, for the Fed because this Fed in particular wants to be absolutely certain before they do anything. And the problem is that if you wait until you're absolutely certain, then you've probably waited too long. Yeah, wait to their eyes. Yeah, they, well, they, they're worried about... They, they all think Volcker was... God, yeah, right? Vol and Volcker saved the world, uh, you know, from a horrendous, and deeply embedded inflation. And they don't want to repeat, they don't want to be Montgomery Burns. Oh, no, that's the guy in The Simpsons. Arthur Burns. <laughs> Arthur right? Burns, yeah, they don't oh, want to be. Oh, no, Arthur. they don't. Okay. Um, I did not see, there must be an internal twitching, because I did. Did you see any twitch? You didn't no. see him. He looks pretty strong and confident. You didn't twitch. No. But, you know, there's, it happens. there's all you sorts feel of things. Huh? I, I, feel, I feel very twitchy about the labor market, that's for sure. You do? Yeah. This labor market looks great until you drill into the details. You know, if you look at the payroll... Why would the NFIB try to hide that? Oh, you have to ask them that, you know, but I look at the, the thing, if I was writing that commentary to go with that report, I would have said the thing that really yells out of the data, and they produce a lot of numbers, but the thing that yells out of the data is three straight declines in hiring yeah. intentions. Okay.